Hey, STAT students, and welcome to our first video of the, uh, the year, uh, an introduction to statistics, and in particular, an introduction to AP statistics, okay? This is for an AP class, uh, a class that is a high school class, getting you college credit, hopefully, right? Now, you may be wondering at this point, what is statistics? Well, let's try to define that. Uh, one definition is, is that statistics is the study of data, okay? We got data all around us. We have people's heights, people's ages. We have uh, the ages of trees, the heights of trees. We have the colors of all these things. There's lots and lots and lots of data around us, okay? And uh, how does one make sense of all that data? How does one make sense of just reams and reams and reams of paper with all these numbers on them? It's enough to make your head swim. Well, what you do is you use statistics, okay? You use descriptive statistics, uh, also known as data analysis, and uh, and you try to you try to reduce all this massive amount of data to a few things you can wrap your brain around. Okay, now we can also think of statistics as the study of variation. Okay, and by variation I mean well, like variation in populations. Is everybody the same height? Is everybody the same weight? No, it varies. Okay, uh, in measurements, let's say. I ask a whole bunch of you to measure this thing to the closest mm, hundredth of an inch. Well, I'm going to get a lot of different uh, measurements. And why? Well, because some of you are going to undermeasure, some of you are going to overmeasure. It's really hard to get exactly right to, uh, to the hundredth of an inch. So there's going to be some errors in there. You also get uh, variation from that. And then also, variation due purely to chance. If I roll a die ten times, I'm not going to get two twos. If I do, there's something weird going on with that die there, all right? I'm going to get different things. Why? Just because, okay? There's just natural variation out there due to chance, okay? So you can think of statistics as the study of data or the study of variation. Either one of those uh, um, uh, definitions works just fine. Now, got two types of statistics here, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Well, what's the difference? Descriptive statistics, also called data analysis, is just making sense. Making sense of data, and there's two ways you make sense of data. You summarize, so you don't have all, all that information, you just have a couple of key points, or you draw a picture, you illustrate it. And that's, that's another way that our human brains can, uh, can, can look at a bunch of data. If you draw, draw a picture that represents it, we can look at it and we can say, ah, okay, now I kind of see what's going on there. All right? Now, inferential statistics is something totally different. Inferential statistics, that's when you make inferences about a population when you only have data about a sample of the population, okay? And this brings up the question, what do you mean sample? I'll show you, okay? Let's say we have, this, uh, this, this, is, a, this is my drawing of the state of Texas, okay? It's, it's not a very good drawing. But uh, I want to look at all the residents of Texas, so let's populate this thing. Okay, there's the residents of Texas, and I want to know, what's the average height of everybody who lives in Texas? Well, I don't know what it is. It does exist, all right? There is a number that is the average height of everybody that lives in Texas. You know, it might be 67 inches, might be 66, might be 66.5289435, I don't know. Uh, but it does exist. It definitely does exist, okay? And that number is called mu. That's a Greek letter there, mu, and it's the Greek equivalent of m, and we use mu because it stands for the mean, okay? So that would be the average height of all the residents of Texas. That's what mu is going to be. Now, am I going to actually get all the people in Texas and walk over to them one by one and measure their height? No. No, 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 no. Why not? Because I'm not crazy. That's why I'm not going to do it. So what am I going to do instead? Well, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take a little sample, okay? I'm going to take a sample of the people in Texas, which is just a subset of everybody there, and I'm going to measure that sample. And that sample is going to represent everyone here, okay? And now you may be thinking, yeah, but what if it's a weird sample? What if you happen to grab, like, all the really short people or all the really tall people. Well, you can't be sure that you won't, but there are things that you can do that we will study 
that make that really, really unlikely that that's going to happen. Okay? And we, like I said, we will study what that means. So uh, I take this sample, I measure the, uh, the average height of those people, and what do I get? I get the average height of this sample of residents in Texas. All right, and that, the, the symbol I use for that is an X with a little line over it. We call that X bar, okay? You're going to find that, stati that statisticians have really uncreative name for, names for things. And so when you put a little line over the X, it becomes X bar, all right? Uh, so what is X bar? X bar is the average height of this sample, and X bar is an estimate of mu. Okay, so we use the sample to represent everyone, and then we use the sample mean, the sample average, to uh, be an estimate of the population average. Okay, that's what inferential statistics does. Now, if you can measure the whole population, so let's say instead of measuring the average height of everybody in Texas, I want to know the average height of all the students at my school. Well, I can do that. There's not that many of them. I'll just line them up and I'll measure them, okay? So if you can do that, then that's called a census. A census is when you measure the whole population, all right? Usually, you can't take a census because usually you're looking at populations that are just so big that's, that's unreasonable to think that you can do it, okay? But every once in a while, you can. So when you can do that, the measurement that you take is called a parameter, okay? And that's like mu. That's the, the example that we saw before. So a parameter is a measurement that describes the entire population. If you can't measure the entire population, then what you do is you take a sample, and the measurement of that sample is called a statistic, like x bar. And we saw that the statistic, x bar, is an estimate of the parameter mu. Okay? So you got populations. And the numbers that describe those populations are parameters. And then you have statistics, and then you have samples of the populations. And the numbers that describe those samples are called statistics. And statistics, as we saw, are, are estimates of the parameters. Okay? Now, you may be thinking, yeah, but your statistic is going to depend on the particular sample you take. Good thinking. You're absolutely right. And we'll talk about the consequences of that. Okay. So, this here, that is what inferential statistics is, okay? In a nutshell, this is fall semester along with a couple of other topics. This is spring semester, okay? That's what our year looks like. So, uh, once you've studied a little statistics, you, uh, you start to be able to uh, answer questions like uh, this question right here. Let's say I survey 50 people and 40 of them say that they prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream. Well. Is that enough for me to assume that most people in the world prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream? Or is it likely that half the world loves vanilla and I just got a weird batch of people? Hmm, good question. How do you answer that? By studying statistics, okay? Uh, here's another one. If 10 men and 40 women apply for five openings at a company and all the candidates are equally qualified and only men are hired, is this evidence of gender discrimination? Sure looks like it, but is it? Or maybe does that just happen by chance? Like we, saw, like we said earlier, there is variation in the world that just happens by chance. Maybe that just happened by chance. Huh. We'll look at questions like this, too. And then there's, uh, uh, if I survey 500 people and 48% of them say that they plan to vote in the next election, what does that mean? Will exactly 48% vote? Or is it going to be like between 47 and 49, between 46 and 50? Uh, what's, what's my margin of error there? Okay, how, how, how close am I? And uh, uh, how certain can I be that the actual percentage is going to be within that margin of error? Also, this is, uh, this, is, this is called confidence intervals, and we're going to be studying this around, I'm going to say, February or so. Okay? Uh, so, what are the topics we're going to, we're going to study? Like I said, we're going to start with descriptive statistics, then we're going to look at how to gather data effectively, and then we're going to look at some probability rules, and then we're going to take those three things and we're going to use them to study inferential statistics. And like I said, fall semester, spring semester, and that's going to be our class. Okay? So, uh, now let's talk a little bit about data. Okay, two types of data. What are those two types? We have quantitative and categorical. What's the difference? 
Well, quantitative is exactly what it sounds like. It's numerical data, okay? It's uh, the height of a tree, the number of letters in the last name, ounces in a cup of coffee, all those things. How would you measure those things? Using numbers, okay? It is not your eye color, okay? All right, because that's, that's not a number, okay? It's also not things like zip codes or the number on a jersey or something like that. Uh, because zip codes and numbers on a jersey are numbers, but they're numbers that aren't really counting anything or measuring anything. So a good way to, uh, a good rule of thumb to use if you're thinking, well, this is numerical, but I'm not sure it's quantitative, ask yourself, are there units? Are there units involved? Okay? The height of a tree. I would measure that in feet or perhaps meters. The number of letters in the last name. Well, it's a number of letters. I'm counting the letters. The letters are my units. Ounces in a cup of coffee. There are my ounces. There's, there are my units right there. Uh, so that's one thing to think of. And then another thing to think of is, would I ever take the average? Okay? So uh, if, let's say, I took everybody's phone numbers. That's a bunch of numbers. Is there any reason to ever average those phone numbers? <laughs> oh, that's categorical data. That's not quantitative data. Okay? Uh, but let's say I took, uh, I was, measured, I was uh, counting the letters of everybody's middle name. Would I ever take the average of that? Yeah, I might if I wanted to know, like, you know, what's the average length of a middle name? I can see doing that, even though it'd be weird. I can see doing it. Uh, so that, that would be quantitative data. Now, categorical, what does that mean? It means not quantitative. <laughs> that was easy, okay? So your favorite color, whether or not you support the death penalty, uh, the breed of a dog, and like I said, zip code. Uh, let's look at this one for a second. Whether or not you support the death penalty. Okay, what are the categories there? Yes, no. Oh, okay. Um, there are also other ways of categorizing data. You can also say that there are two types of data, univariate and bivariate. And uh, those of you who are into your uh, uh, prefixes, you know that this is one and this is two. This would be one variable data, and this would be two variable data. One variable data like what? Uh, I'm describing a single characteristic of the individuals. For example, let's say I look at 200 people, and I see that 118 of them are men, and 82 are women. Well, OK, there you go. So there's a, there's a, a one variable data. I've uh, just measured the, the gender. And I've seen that 59% of them are male, 41% are, fe are female. Or perhaps I would want to know what their uh, favorite type of ice cream is. Okay, we have two desserts that we're offering tonight. We have chocolate chip ice cream, we have mango ice cream. And uh, so I survey the room, and I find that 52% of them prefer chocolate chip, and 48% of them prefer mango. Again, one variable, okay? Now, what about two variable data? Well, it's when you describe two characteristics. What if I asked both of these questions of everyone? Well, then I would have bivariate data. Then I could put in a little table like this, and I'd say, let's see, I got 104 people wanting chocolate chip and 96 people wanting mango, and then I would look at the number of women. Let's see, from this table here, I can see that, uh, well, let's see, everybody likes, uh, well, there, there are more men than women, uh, but it seems like the men have a serious preference for chocolate chip, and uh, the women uh, are a little, little slightly more likely to like a mango, and maybe a better way to illustrate this would be to, uh, uh, instead of put the actual counts in there, but if I just put the percentages in there, that might be an easier way to see what's going on. And uh, now I see, yeah, um, out of the 41% that are women, 22% of that, over half, like mango ice cream, but over here in the men, uh, they definitely prefer the chocolate chip. Huh, all right? Uh, that is a good example of bivariate data. And actually, to be, tr to be uh, honest, it's not just univariate and bivariate. There's also something called multivariate. Uh, you might actually want to look at a whole bunch of characteristics of, uh, of each of your individuals and then uh, somehow look at the, uh, the relationships between all of those variables. Then you're looking at multivariate data. In this class, we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, restrict ourselves to univariate data and bivariate data. In your next stats class, you'll probably look at multivariate data. Okay? Now, uh, speaking of next, uh, that's it for this video. Now it's time to uh, uh, prepare ourselves for the next video, which is going to be displaying and describing categorical data. Okay? Until then, adios.